Ronnie, you wouldn't believe what happens to me yesterday getting ready to get on the subway. I go down the subway station. I see Gladbag down there. Gladbag is still around after all these years. All these years later, Gladbag is still there. All right, let me let me set this up for people who never heard the story before. When Fez and I uh, first came to New York like six years ago, uh, you know, when you're first in New York, you you see some homeless people. You're trying to figure out who do you give money to, who do you not, which one's an angle, which one's a gimmick. We're walking down the street in the snow, a pro, and it's nighttime, right? And it's freezing snow, wind, everything. Approaching us is a naked woman only wearing a glad bag, a fucking trash bag around her. And she's shivering and staggering towards us. And, we're, and she's like, help me, help me. And we're like, yes, we will help you. We're unloading our wallets like a couple of fucking rubes. Well, you know, thinking, oh, my God, this woman, she's been raped. Her clothes have been taken away. We've helped her. We see her two weeks later. She's still in a goddamn glad bag. In two weeks, she can't come up with a pair of pants and a tube stop, a top. After this, as the year goes by, we must see her 60, 70 times, always working the glad bag angle. Then one time we see her on the weekend when she was off work and she's got a fucking boombox. She's smoking crack. She's just having the time of her life. The Tommy Hilfiger jacket. One of the best angles in the history of uh, homeless uh, panhandling. So I see Gladbag, and she's on the payphone down there on the subway platform. She's always at the same subway, though, right? It's always the same stop. These homeless, they, like, live at certain places. So... I hear her screaming on the payphone at somebody. I can't understand a word she's saying. She's screaming so loud you can't understand her anyway. I turn, you know, I'm like, all right, there's glad bag. I turn, walk away. I look back because she's still screaming minutes later. I look back. She's laid out on the subway platform on the gr on the floor. She has pulled her clothes off. She's nine months pregnant and going into labor. So there is naked Gladbag on the subway platform screaming, help me, because she's ready to give birth. I'm, I'm witnessing a crack baby birth at this point. Wow. So people are gathering around. I go to get the station agent. I go back upstairs. I go to the station agent's office. Nowhere to be found. They're completely off duty. No agent at the station. So I run upstairs, even up to the street level, to use my cell phone, because it won't work down there. I call 911, like I'm always ready to do. So I'm explaining, there's a woman in labor, she's screaming, she's naked. And they're like, she's naked? Why? Why is she naked? And I'm thinking, I should have left that part out of it to the 911 operator. So I get back down there, and now people are gathered around her. I go down there, and I'm like, the 911 lady said, don't give her any water or food. You know, I'm trying to... Who's going to have a sandwich when they're, having, <laughs> when they're in labor? And I'm thinking, no one gives her water or food anyway, on a, on a daily basis. And this crack <laughs> happens to be food. So she's down there. She is screaming. Finally, the cops show up. Two cops. No paramedics yet. Two cops. They're trying to scatter everyone away from her. Mm -hmm. And as every, they're like, could we please give this woman some dignity? How, ma how many people do you think were gathering around? There was a good ten people around her at that point. Okay. One guy, one hippie guy holding her hand. Give her some dignity. She works an angle with the tourist. Wearing a fucking glad bag in a in a blizzard, and she is just bare naked because she has torn her cl her own clothes off sure. that she was wearing. So then the police officer says, "Does anyone have any rubber gloves?" He's asking around in the crowd, and I'm wondering why the police officers don't have rubber gloves. Well, I think to myself, Ronnie, I think, wait a minute, the ONA show they keep those rubber latex gloves around for whatever reason. So you know the reasons. So I, Sick bastards. so I come running back here to XM, and I grab Earl to help me. Why wouldn't you just call Earl? Uh, you know what? That's a good idea. I never thought of that. You were running away from danger. <laughs> you scattered. So I'm like, Earl, find the rubber gloves. We're gathering up Ron and Fez XM t-shirts and newspapers. Anything that you might need for a birth of a crackhead baby in a subway. Because Butterfly McQueen <laughs> comes screaming... 
uh, two blocks away and f- and five stories up. So we gather up all this stuff. We get down there, and she's gone. The paramedics had taken her away. I thought I was going to be able to show up with those rubber gloves for the police officer and really have something for him. So there was a story, but you left it. Yeah. Well, I tried to help. I, I left to help twice. Yes. When you're leaving, you're not helping. <laughs> Well, let's hope uh, she had a beautiful little baby. And just a tiny little glad bag that she could be wearing. Uh, Jay, Jay, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Ron and Fez. Yeah, you had said something earlier, Ron, about there must be a a whole city of them down there. I used to work for the Transit Authority a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I was a flagman. And if you walk tracks from on the F line from 2nd Avenue to East Broadway, it was like Grand Central down there. Or the Bowery on the J line, it was nothing but wall to wall homeless just strolling all up and down the tracks. You wouldn't believe it. Mole people, they call them, people that live underground. Yeah, exactly. They had places to live. They had uh, running water that they used. In one of the little uh, unused rooms down there, I saw some bunk beds and furniture. Wow. I mean, it was incredible. Very organized. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's nothing you'd want to sleep on, Fez. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that junkyard furniture is nothing that seems like it's even livable. I had never been that close to a lady in labor before, to a woman in labor. That was freaky. Well, you did the right thing. You ran as far as <laughs> away and as high as you could go, acting like you were busy. I was trying to find stuff to help. Your opportunity was right there. Push, push, breathe, breathe. Too bad for her she didn't get a... Hero. Hey, Matt, Matt, you're on running Fez. Fezzy, I'm ashamed of you, buddy. Why? The hero could have been you now instead of Ron, but no. It could have been you. It. I you think, blew it. I think I made all the right decisions. Baby. First of all, I yeah. said to you, why didn't you call Earl? He could have been here half as fast, and you would have had that shit. Oh, my chest was hurting, too, running up and down the sidewalks and Your the steps. Your chest was hurting because <laughs> you saw you were neat at one place, you went the other. Yeah, I mean, Fez was really flush, and he was like, he's like, I, I mean, he just came in back here like a bat out of hell, and he was like, we need gloves. And I'm like, what happened? He's like, there's a woman, like a crackhead giving birth. I'm like, where? <laughs> he's like, it's in the subway station. He and didn't the, believe me. No, my first thought was glad bag lady, because well, I see every night. you know that an ambulance is going to be there to cart that woman away before you and your t-shirt and your, gl- and your latex gloves make any, uh difference at all it was taking so long to begin with just for the police officers to show up don't you learn anything from me couldn't you have used this opportunity to be a hero what should i have done gave birth to that baby a little nappy headed crack baby would have been yours that thing would have been so jittery i would have dropped it right there on the concrete floor uh bingo you're on run a fez hey fezzy uh naked woman run away obviously the natural instincts kicked in you know, the funny thing is that he tells his story like he has a story to tell. And then Earl's saying to me, hey, did you hear what happened with Fez? I go, no, I'm going to let him tell me on the air because my chick told me he had a, a, a good story. So I was sitting here waiting to hear the story. A story starts to happen. He leaves it. It's still a good story. I uh, hope. I don't know what exactly happened. It would have been a better story if I could have gotten those rubber gloves down there faster. That story doesn't make any sense. The rubber gloves part. They needed supplies. What is it, Dave? What is, what's the panic going on in that room? No, because he keeps badgering me. He's like, tell the story. Tell the story. Like, Get the I- fuck in here and leave him alone. I see a fight break out over there. What is an Earl telling me? I can't call 911 again. I, I, I want to keep it about Fez, but that is just total <laughs> insanity Earl. No, Earl calls me and goes, uh, Dave, uh, uh, you got to get down to help Fez to get, get down to the subway uh, station. Fez is delivering a baby. I'm like, he's fucking what? When did that happen? I have no idea. I was downstairs eating a sandwich. What kind? Uh, roast beef. Got any more? Uh, no, I ate it all yesterday. I'm starving. How uh, was it? I was not so good, Ronnie. 
Oh, good. You know what? That's a good point, though, Dave, because when I gathered up, finally gathered up the supplies that were necessary, rubber gloves, Ron and Fez t-shirts, newspapers. Was this 15 minutes after the ambulance had left? <laughs> it was some point after the ambulance had left. But I went running back into the subway to get those things to the police officer, and Earl refused to follow me down into the subway. <laughs> he probably didn't believe the story. No, because I said, let me call Dave just so, so we can get more stuff, but I couldn't, if I were to call Dave while we are in the subway, the phone wouldn't work, so I had to stay at the edge of the uh, the subway tracks, I mean, the, uh, the subway station, to make the call. By that time, the woman was already <laughs> in the hospital. I just sit there eating a sandwich, being like, I'm not listening to any of these two insane people. <laughs> I'm just going to eat this roast beef sandwich. No, there's no reason for you to give up that. <laughs> I'm what watching kind of bread? Uh, just a regular Italian, you know, it was like a hero type style. Any hoagie rolls in there, Earl? No, we're out of hoagie rolls. You know what I like to do? I mean, we got a lot of room here. I like to put up a bakery. Nice little, uh, was that a kiln? Hmm. I think that's for pottery. Scott, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, boys. 1352 yeah. checking in. Yeah, buddy. Cool. Why, why did he do all that running around? Why didn't they just use the pay phone right there on the wall? Because Fez Watley panicked, left a great story... And that's what we got. I saw something wonderful, and I took off. Well, I went to alert the station agent because I figured they Why? would be able to get someone there faster. Why do you need anyone, Fez? You could have been a hero. I can't deliver a crack, baby. My initial words were, shh, quiet. I've got this. I don't want to sound. I'm going to deliver this baby Scientology style in total silence. There'd be a little nappy-headed baby named Ronnie B. somewhere today. Sucking crack off its mama's teeth. <laughs> if I see her back Fezzy. in that subway today, working again. Fezzy, why? Why did you panic? I did everything I possibly could. Uh, Chris, you're running Fez. Fezzy, you could have been a hero just for Monday. Anyway, listen, he was the station agent. He, he's that midget guy. You just got to look a little over the counter. He's there. Where did you go? Looking for a midget? I wasn't looking for Peter Dinklage. <laughs> Is that your name for your penis? No. I wish. <laughs> wish I had thought of it first. Uh, big log, you're running Fez. Yeah, Fez. Is that the first time you've seen a woman naked? No, it was. It was the first time I saw a woman in labor. <laughs> and I figured we were going to start seeing some crowning any second. They don't start in crown, uh... For men, well, black chicks have babies faster, don't they, Earl? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I asked uh, Earl's mom, I go, what was the uh, delivery like with Earl? She says it was like spitting out a watermelon seed. <laughs> That's how fast it came. I was an easy birth. Yeah. That's because you're bald. No friction. Fezzy, I really wish you would have stayed and we could have had a great story for the air. <laughs> I still think it's a great story. I watched a crackhead go into labor. And then ran. Yeah. That's the problem. There's all kinds of excitement that took place. Ran from danger or ran to help? You don't run away to help unless you're fucking Lassie. Lassie runs away because it's not a smart enough species to do the work itself. You had the opportunity to do a Scientology birth. Why call Earl? He can't do anything. I came up here uh, to look for the rubber gloves, and Earl was the only one still here. You had gone home for the day. No, I was just downstairs getting my after-show sandwich. You were 9 to 5 in it. Scott, you're on run a fez. Hey, buddies, 207-253. Yeah. I wanted to know, I wanted to ask Dave if he's sure it was a roast beef sandwich or was it a peanut butter and dick jelly sandwich? No, please. Do you have a uh, fucking PD in there? <laughs> and Jay? No. This was roast beef, baby. Oil and vin. But, uh, hey, the interesting thing about going downstairs, I saw a mouse downstairs. And I just sat there and kept eating and didn't alert anyone or the other customers. We haven't gone back to a certain burger joint because Fezzy saw a tiny field mouse. I can't go back in there. And I've thought about it. I've passed that place and thought, all right, has enough time passed? Is there a And is they there have a, a great burger and great breakfast there. I feel like because you share with us, Earl and Dave and I have been back there like 12 times. What? Times that we wanted to eat there when we told you we were going home. Yeah. We have met. 
around the corner, and then we've all gone down together. Yeah. Well, you could t at least tell me. Well, you won't go there and eat. And then you'll try to get us to one of your bad places. Ain't no fun anyway. No offense, but it's always the salad. And this is a burger joint. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But they they did have nice, healthy options on their menu that I like to have. Yeah, rat shit and uh, lettuce was wonderful for you. Damn, I wish you would have stayed and had a story, Fez. I do have a story. I told it. You know what you could have been today? What? Half the show. You <laughs> could have been a partner today. Yeah. Mike, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, by the time Fez and Al got back to the subway, the kid was receiving his first communion. <laughs> no kidding. That's exactly. How long did it take for these two to fucking run? And Earl, I don't even blame you because if Fez would have called you, said grab the gloves and the T-shirts and get here as quick as I could have, at least half the time would have been gone. I would have still had to gone up the stairs for the cell phone to work. Then you ran up the street into a building caught the fucking elevator, <laughs> and came down all the way down the hall. That had to add at least half your time. And if you met Earl up here, why didn't Earl follow him down? Why did he have to make this bizarre frantic phone call to me? Could you imagine how much Earl wanted this out of his apartment? <laughs> this craziness? He must have fucking felt like he was in Pulp Fiction, and suddenly John Travolta uh, shows up screaming. Earl would not go down the stairs into the crackhead hole. By this time, everyone was already gone. It was just a normal subway. Oh, yeah, because Earl then calls me back just five minutes later. Hey, Dave, no bother to go down to the subway. Everyone's gone. Everyone's there. And well, I'm like, all right, I'll just keep eating my sandwich, I guess. You, you had your dick and your roast beef sandwich and just sitting there quietly? All that was left there was a stained piece of old newspaper that they had put her on. Well, anyway, it was almost a good story, Fuzz. I still think it's a good story, and I stand by my actions. It's the beginning of it's a good story. You saw a woman, a uh, crackhead particularly, giving birth, and then you ran away from her. That's where it gets <laughs> to, well, then why am I still listening to you? <laughs> <laughs> there was, I was, uh, I shouldn't have been, but I was amazed at how many people were just walking past her the first time when she first hit the floor, just not wanting anything to do with the situation. Well, what, do you think you've done more or less? I did more. I called for help. Help! 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 How do you know it was another glad bag gimmick, though? If suddenly everybody was missing a wallet, she would be the queen. In her fake pregnancy stomach. Well, goddamn, it was almost a good story.